Hello everyone, Santa here, and today I want to talk some about Hyrule Warriors because I've been playing that a lot lately. Uh, before I do, I do want to acknowledge that yes, uh, this is going to be over gameplay footage from Guild Wars 1, which is definitely not Hyrule Warriors, but A, I don't have a capture card that could go into my Wii U, and uh, B, that's just kind of what this program's about anyways. So uh, like I said, I've been playing Hyrule Warriors. I played it back closer to when it first came out on the Wii U uh, a while ago now. And at the time, I remember thinking, this is fine, but I've got some something with it is kind of lacking to me. And so I've lately been kind of wanting to replay it. Uh, the sort of premise of a lot of Legend of Zelda characters doing things is really interesting to me. Um, man, if I go Super Train of Thought, I'd be like, it'd be really cool to have a Legend of Zelda game where you play a bunch of different characters that's like a, a traditional Zelda game. But never mind that. Um so I wanted to play Hyrule Warriors again, and uh, it's, for those unfamiliar, it's in kind of the Musou. Uh, Warriors is kind of also what gets referred to genre, where you basically have a battlefield and you're playing some sort of super-powered hero that can, like, knock down enemies like bowling pins, uh, which I'll get to more on that in a bit. But uh, you basically can just go around the battlefield doing stuff to be sort of emblematic of who the character is. Uh, so the other one that I've played, I think it might be like Orochi Warriors, something or another. It was also on the Wii U, um, but it has a bunch of characters from across history and other random characters like Ryu Hiyubasa because that's the company that makes it. Uh, but the basic idea is you pick some sort of hero and your main goal is to accomplish objectives on the battlefield uh, that kind of come up as the course of the mission progresses. So you have a big battlefield area and there's like keeps and places that you hold and outposts and things. At least this is how Hyrule Warriors works. It's been a long time since I played the other ones. So I don't remember all of its particular mechanics off the top of my head, but I imagine they're fairly similar. Um, so the idea is you defeat enough enemies in a keep and you can defeat the keep boss who then spawns to capture the keep. Stuff like that. Uh, and I like the overall set of those mechanics. I think it's a really interesting way of sort of doing a battlefield and holding territory and things like that. Um, but the key here is uh, a couple of different things. So first there are three, roughly th four, I guess, maybe tiers of enemies. Uh, it's a little hard to say, but you have your, your basic minions, your peons, your grunts, whatever. Uh, and then you have ones that are kind of a step above that, that are like keep bosses and outpost, bo outpost bosses and stuff like that. They're, they're dangerous-ish, or at least they have some actual durability to them, but they're not like major things they just actually have health bars uh and then above that you have like i don't know i don't know exactly what you call them um but your higher tier enemies that have more that they can do so in hyrule warriors it's like your shield moblins i think they are um basically it's usually enemies that can block but some of your pose and stuff like that they just have more advanced stuff that they can do so they're not like a super peon but they're like an actual thing and they tend to be a lot more threatening uh, and then you have, like, your boss level things, like a King Dodongo, or, um, I guess those are almost kind of orthogonal. But then you have, like, other player characters as well, like Ganondorf or whoever um, you're battling. So, that have a, a much broader swath of abilities. And you really have to time the mechanics with these higher tier enemies for when they're vulnerable to be able to get in the super hits to deal a lot of damage to them and stuff like that. Um... So this is kind of like the structure of enemies. Now, a lot of what my uh, analysis is with the combat, because this is really what I look at um, with games for me, whether or not I'll like the game is dependent upon a few things. First of all is like, do I have a direction of what I'm doing? That's a really important thing for like getting into a game. Uh, so that's where, for example, I'll bounce, bounce off of a game like Skyrim, where I go and I begin playing Skyrim and I'm like, okay, but what do I do? What is my motivation? Right? The game doesn't provide me any motivation, so I just I don't know where to go with anything. Uh, versus, um, like, uh, Breath of the Wild, which it has some superficial similarities to Skyrim, where I know what I'm trying to do. Right, It gives me a sense of direction and progression and gets me engaged enough in the world that I can kind of get a sense for things. Like, with Guild Wars 1, for example, like, there's a narrative and stuff, but... Once I get entrenched enough in game, like Guild Wars 1, where I have a sense of uh, familiarity with the systems, because I need that purpose to get familiar with the systems. Once I have that, then I'm like, cool, now I can go explore and kind of figure out my own goals. But I need enough of a lead-in to be able to figure out what sort of goals to set in the game and how the kind of mechanics work and stuff to some extent. But it's really like, 
I need something to pull me along to give me a sense of what goals to set in a game. And Skyrim just doesn't give me, like, what am I motivated to accomplish here? Um, whereas something like Breath of the Wild does. So that's a really important aspect of games to me. Um, and so, like, Hyrule Warriors, I'm fine with that. Like, that, it covers it. Like, what am I trying to do? Sometimes it kind of drops, a, like, a little bit of a lull where it's like, I'm not entirely sure what my next goal in this mission is. But, you know, it's beat the mission and it, and it will tell me how to do that as the mission progresses. So that's, that's fine. Um, but then it's like the moment by moment gameplay, like what am I actively doing in the game? And this is where I can really run into issues with certain games. Uh, like guild wars two, I have this issue where I will just kind of get bored with the combat system because I, it doesn't, um, the stand fighting standard enemies just is not something that's engaging to me in guild wars two. It's not like, it's completely like it's not bad in the sense of like I don't dislike it. It's just boring, which is kind of a bad spot. So, um, whereas Guild Wars One tends to engage me a lot more, for example, um, or you know just things like that. So, um, there's what am I doing? That's kind of a more moment by moment. So um, that needs to be something that I find engaging and what I've found with Hyrule Warriors with the combat in that game as and as I've played it more and gotten more familiar with the systems, some of my initial problems have kind of smoothed out a little bit uh, and it's very character dependent but to, to, to kind of get at my point, um, I can feel like the control scheme for the combat is very um, I'm not sure exactly the word to use convoluted is kind of how I feel um, so to kind of explain a little bit um, a lot of it is uh, some characters the way that they work d feels um, very sort of archaic or convoluted or a bit difficult to do so uh, for those unfamiliar I should go over how the combat system works so you basically have uh, so you have a dodge button, which lets you, um, dodge, uh, and then you have a use item button, uh, which uses your currently selected item. These are just usually things that kind of are like, they're more for doing random stuff on the battlefield, like blowing up rocks, um, or shooting, like, they can sometimes be a solve for very specific enemies, like Deku Babas, um, are specifically taken down with the bow and arrow. Uh, and you can't take them down with other things or like BMOs are blown up with bombs, that sort of stuff. Um, there are vines that you knock down with the boomerang. So there's very specific, like this weapon solves this sort of specific puzzle type of thing, uh, or this item, I should say. Um, but you can use them against enemies and like the boomerang will stun enemies near you. Uh, and, and again, I've been playing this on normal, so I don't know if harder difficulty will solve some of the things like... The standard peon enemies are kind of, to me, unsatisfying to to kill because they're um, just kind of there. And like I, I compare them to bowling pins for a reason. It used they're there to be knocked down, and it does doesn't feel particularly satisfying to me. Um, so the the actual combat is kind of based off of like you have your dodge button. Um, I'm trying to remember. What? Okay, so that's dodge. Okay, then you have your... Um, sorry, I was looking over at the controller to try to remember what the buttons are. So A is dodge with the control scheme that I'm using. Um, and then you have the uh, sort of special attack. So you have a special attack that you can use. It's the same thing every time. I mean, this is what you expect, right? So you have a meter that fills up as you like damage enemies or something or defeat them. I'm not 100% clear about what fills it up, but you can also get um, power-ups that fill it up. Uh, and this does some sort of powerful... Um, wide area attack. It's kind of a bit configured each character, but it's a, basically like a cinematic attack. Um, and that, you know, is effective, but that's the same button on each character. Um, and then you have uh, a super powered mode that you can enter when your magic meter is full, and you hit a button to enter that. Um, and when that and, and that has a limited meter, you can either end it early by pushing the X button to do some sort of special attack, or if you let it drain out all the way, once it finishes draining, your character will perform a different special attack. And the, these are just kind of um, 
ways of doing more stuff. And the super powered mode does things like power us through blocks and stuff like that. Uh, it's definitely useful and for fighting um, like boss player characters. Uh, but then most of what you're doing is probably using the um, the light attack and the heavy attack. So this is what varies per character. But the structure of how it works is more or less the same where you have a chain of light attacks. So you have, if you push the light attack button multiple times in a row, you'll go through a chain of four to eight different attacks that link into each other. And they can do a lot of different movement stuff and, and whatever as well. Um, and then you have your heavy attack button, so you can just push it by itself to do something. What exactly that is depends a bit upon characters. Like, Link has a spin attack. Zelda will charge up um, her, her weapon um, for doing... Uh, souped up versions of moves bran that branch off of uh, the attack chain. So this is kind of um, what you have is you have your light attack, but after you push the light attack button, you can usually push the heavy attack button to get a different like sort of branching off chain. So this can this varies of course by character, like how many times you can push the heavy attack button to get a special thing afterwards, what exactly it does, um, and how many links in the light attack chain have heavy attack branches off of them um so uh the control scheme i use b is for light attack y is for heavy attack so it's like b y b b y b b b y you get the idea um so it's always it's kind of like a comb where you have the along the spine of the comb is always a is always light attack so you never go from heavy attack to light attack it's always light attack some number of light attacks and then heavy attack, and there's some number of those that can go afterwards. So that's kind of the basic thing. Um, but this this structure is very, very awkward for certain characters. Um, the one that immediately comes to mind is Sheik. So Sheik has, um, off of the light attacks, has elementally attuned moves. So like, and I don't remember the order of them, but for example, say a water attack off of uh, the first B, so BY for a water attack, BBY for a fire attack, BBBY for a lightning attack, BBBBY for you for like a shadow attack. You, you get the idea. And like all of these moves are very different off of these chains, um, but they also charge you and change the effect of your your just standard heavy attack. So you get one of these effects on you, say the fire one, and then your standard heavy attack now will be like a, a, it'll charge it for the next time you use it, will like drop a meteor sort of thing in an area. So it does a special effect and, and that differs depending upon which one it's been charged with. So you can see this is very complicated. So what you end up having to do for a character is kind of memorize a um, almost labyrinthine chain of like, how do I get to the specific move that I want? Like what button combination do I press? Uh, to get the move that I that I particularly want to use. So, for example, um, if I remember correctly, off of Zelda, she has three light attacks, heavy attack, to go into kind of a chain where she darts forward with her um, with her rapier and does kind of a, a a dash attack sort of thing, a zigzaggy dash attack, and then you push it you push heavy attack again, and she will uh, fire her bow which will rain arrows down on an area, and you can change direction in between those. Um, so I find that's really effective. But then if you do four light attacks and then heavy attack, you do this like point-blank area of effect spell that has like multiple hits and stuff. Um, so like the first one is better in certain circumstances, the second one's better in others, but you have to really memorize these chains to get to the specific effect you want. And uh, what ends up happening is that there's not necessarily a direct connection. And this is um, a specific problem that I have, I think, with magic attack sequences like this in general, where if you're not careful, it doesn't necessarily make any sense where you branch off to whatever, and it's not necessarily more powerful, so you end up having to memorize these different attack chains um, in order to be able to figure out what button combination gets you to the specific move you want to use at this moment. And I don't quite like that setup. It feels very clunky, especially for a game that wants you to switch characters a lot. And so I've been playing a lot of Smash Bros. Ultimate as well, and that 
has a lot of different characters with a lot of very different personalized movesets. Because this is something that's really important, right? Hyrule Warriors really wants to make sure that each character plays like you want that character to play, if that makes sense. Like, they really try to capture the feeling of that character. And Smash Brothers is trying to do the same thing. And they both have similar sort of like, we have a restriction on how the game is structured from a control standpoint, right? And they have to try to figure out how to express each character in that strict structure. Um, And they do a lot to try to do that, and they do a lot of uh, unique mechanics per character to try to give them room for that. Um, And Smash Brothers, you know, they they both do this, right? Where you get um, some characters in Smash Brothers that have very specific mechanics going on with them. For example, the Inklings ink in Smash Bros. Ultimate is a unique mechanic to how the Inkling works, and that's very specialized, but try to capture the feel of what the Inkling is like. Um, so you get these these different things, and different characters like, say, Krom has a, doesn't have a, a jab chain versus, like, Lucina does. Or, um, these are characters I play, obviously, but, like, Toon Link and a, and standard issue Link don't have they have a, a three hit combo for their jab, whereas Young Link will actually have like a hold down jab that like multiple hits, uh, and then you can let go for kind of the final hit, right? So there there there's slight tweaks to some of how these things work, um, and what I'm kind of getting at is I kind of wish that Hyrule Warriors had a different sort of control scheme because it's the same sort of control scheme in all of the Warriors games as far as I'm aware, at least the basic structure of it. But I wish it had something that um, could branch off, like have the standard attack chain be simpler and have the special moves be branched off in a different way that allowed them to be um, more... Uh, easily access, so you're not getting confused about how do I get to this particular move. So you can then pick your moves a little bit more situationally and stuff like that. Now, this is what would be my preference, and I'm not saying the game should change to that. Um, and like, if their audi- if the audience for the Warrior Games likes the way that the Warrior Games are designed, then cool. Like, I- I'm fine with that. It's just a matter for me, what I would personally like would be something where it's a little bit more a la carte and I don't have to try to memorize these chains of moves to be able to get to what I want. Um, and in many regards too, I'd like it if the the standard peons were a little bit more more threatening. Um, again, this might just be a difficulty level thing though. Um, actually, the game that I've been kind of mentally comparing it to, aside from Smash Brothers, has actually been Middle Earth Shadow of War where you have the same idea of it like it's particularly in the sieges like you're trying to take a fortress and you're super ridiculous powerful compared to normal enemies but there's souped up versions of enemies that are like more threatening um and you can kind of mow through the peons but i feel like shadow of war kind of executes a little bit better on the feel that i want from this sort of game, from a control standpoint, where it's, I find it's a lot more satisfying to take down standard issue orcs, even though they are, like, not generally that threatening, per se. Um, and I like the way that the control scheme works better, where your standard attacks are a lot simpler, um, you know, with the that similar sort of control scheme to Batman Arkham games, um, where it's like, okay, well, these are kind of, this is my my attack scheme, but the way that you can combine stuff together and um, the feeling of knowing when do I go, where can I start applying stealth? Obviously, stealth wouldn't work so well in a Hyrule Warriors type game, but, you know, where do I apply my different attack modes of, like, when do I start doing stuff with bows versus when do I use these uh, special attacks that I've charged up and stuff like that? And it's just, I prefer the way that control scheme feels to use and figure out and understand than I do the one in Hyrule Warriors. But that's just me. And every person's going to have different things that they want from how a game plays and how the controls are set up. And I do think it's useful to try to think about, you know, what are the problems that they're trying to solve? What restrictions do they have? Um, how are they solving them? What would I like better? But also acknowledging that there are people who like it this way. And what are the things that they like about it, right? So what are the things that to like about this sort of magic sequence system Um, I think it does a little bit, there can be a little bit of um, guidance with it 
in that it can give you a sense of like what rails to go on for like doing stuff but also i really have found that different characters do play quite a bit differently based upon how the weapon plays out and i definitely like certain things way better than others um so for example i don't really like how she plays because i find it uh, too cumbersome but i'm sure that there are people who really love how she plays and so that's a really cool system and the other thing is by having to go through the weaker attacks, or the, the standard attack chain, I should say, not necessarily weaker per se, but to get to specific um, weak to strong attack chains, it kind of plays into the uh, wanting to attack the weaker enemies around you. So you can be kind of attacking the weaker enemies inadvertently as you're getting to the stronger attacks that you actually want to use. So I don't know. I've probably gone on long enough, but it's something that I've been thinking about and trying to process and analyze of like, okay, what are the things that I dislike about this system? If I were to do this type of game, how would I approach the combat differently? Um, and, like, what is it trying to go for? Like, I certainly appreciate cannon fodder, but there's... Um, the fact that the game isn't actually that focused on the combat per se, and it's more focused on completing the battlefield objectives, definitely serves the game well, in my opinion. And that's really important for making it so that way the focus isn't on taking down cannon fodder because after a while, that just becomes boring. So I, I do appreciate how it's set up from that regard. So uh, anyway, I've probably babbled on long enough, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up here. Uh, definitely interested if you've played the game. What are, what are your thoughts on it? Are there things that you like, especially if you like how that system is set up, what are some of the things that you really like about the sort of magic sequence uh, type system and uh, if you don't like it, you know, what are some of the things that you don't like about it? But let's be thoughtful. Let's be thoughtful. So until next time, everyone, take care. Bye-bye.